2024 real estate market predictions. Folks, I'm here today to go out on a limb and give you my assessment of what the market is going to look like. Yes, what does Bela say? What's happening with the interest rates? What's going to happen with the inventory levels? What's going to happen with affordability? What does this all mean for buyers and sellers in this Philadelphia suburban market? Let's just take a look one at a time, right? Let's look at all the market trends. You know, the data is very revealing. We have some national data and market trends, and then I have some local information as well. Stay tuned to the end where I share some just county numbers, and we'll try and make some sense out of it so you can make some good decisions for your family. So as with everything, let's start with sales. The home sales is often a, the best predictor of what's going to happen. So what's going to happen with sales this year? Well, let's take a look at what's been happening over the last 30 years. This chart goes back all the way to 1994. Uh, the 2023 sales were the lowest they have been in 30 years. The only other time we've had these really low sales was back during the recession years of 2008 and 9 and during the COVID months. So the fact that these sales are the lowest they've been in 30 years is a very strong indication of what the market's doing. Far fewer transactions than they have ever been. And why? Because the sellers paused and the buyers paused. So let's look at why the buyers paused here. The buyers paused because of the mortgage rates. That's the one significant component of why the buyers were not buying because the interest rates shot up all the way to 8% at some point last year. So it's not just the fact that it went up so high, people were lulled into um, those 3% and 4% interest rates. And now that they were 8%, people, they, you know, it was a shock to the system and you know, affordability became an issue. But it's not just that, it's just that it, they rose so rapidly that that gave, became more of a shock to the system rather than um, you know, the actual number itself. Because 8% interest is not new. We've had 8% rates before, 10%, 12%, 15% rates before. But it's just that they've been three for so long, three and under, that um, this eight was a shock to the system. The other thing was inventory levels. So we talk about the buyers pausing, but the builders and the sellers paused as well. So affordability is a big thing. We... Um, this this affordability affects more of the you know the median bu the buyers in the first time home buyers category and where the median prices were at the lower end uh, they definitely were you know not able to make those offers and multiple bids and you know waive those contingencies like they were required to do but that you can see is a very small percentage significant reason was the mortgage interest rates and just lack of inventory so why low sales the buyers just paused and the sellers paused. And there was a reason why everybody just took back, stood back and decided to take stock before they made any decisions regarding real estate. The buyers paused for these three reasons. The mortgage rates, of course, rose. Everybody has been, you know, it's been the, uh, the talk of the town. The mortgage rates rose drastically all the way up to 8% at some point last year. And it's not just the fact that they go, went as high as 8%. It is also important to note that the the rise was pretty drastic. It, was, it happened pretty sharp and it happened pretty quickly. So while we're not new to 8%, 10%, 12%, 14% interest rates, the fact that they rose from three to eight so significantly and quickly, that was what made the buyers pause. The other thing is the inventory levels. Of course, the inventory, just the number of homes that were available to purchase were just so few that you didn't really have a choice. And the affordability, of course, this is in the lower ends. This is where, you know, below the median home prices for the first time home buyers. This was a huge shock to their system where affordability became an issue and they were unfortunately priced out of the market. What happened to those buyers was they decided to continue renting. And in some cases, there was some anecdotal evidence of even the rents making more sense than the mortgage payments for the same house. So the affordability factor was impactful, but as you can see, not as important as the mortgage rates and the inventory levels. So my prediction of higher sales uh, volume is going to only be possible if we look at the inventory levels and we see more homes up for sale. So where is it coming from? Is it coming from new construction or is it coming from the existing homeowners? So new construction here looks like it is finally coming up to meet the 52 year old averages, right? The red lines indicate that the new construction was just not building enough homes. You know, COVID kind of made, was a bit of a setback as well. They had supply chain issues, they had staffing issues. And, you know, 
builders takes time you know it takes time to find the locations time to develop those sites and time to build the homes so that's not something that you can flip around quickly just based on what the market demand is right so we feel like the homeowners are the builders are going to you know continue uh, to help with that low inventory and the sellers who were paused last year you know all that all that rumbling in the market was a little significant and now they are over it now they've gotten some advice from you know uh, their strategic partners and there'll be more homes i believe on the market and the sellers are now ready to sell and actually cash in on all the tremendous equity that they have in their homes so we will see more homes for sale in 2024 that's my prediction the sellers are sitting on tremendous equity in their homes look at this chart this pie chart is so uh, telling um, with all the home price increases we've been seeing and the mortgage payments that were you know steady and that that re that remained uh, fixed the the level of equity that the homeowners have generated in their homes is so significant 67 percent of the homeowners either have their mortgages completely paid off or at least 50 percent equity in their homes that is huge that is huge and i'm sure there'll be sellers who are willing to you know cash in on that equity and move on with their lives so i it is a very common uh, knowledge within the industry that people move for personal reasons you know everybody it's not just the numbers that drive the real estate decisions it is life changes that drive the real estate decisions you know the seniors are looking to downsize if they are if someone's getting married and uh, needs a bigger space you know and they're moving together if you have a child or some pets and you need that backyard or you need that school district those are the reasons that people are moving and those reasons continue so while that last year's uh, sales was so low and you know buyers paused i believe that this year things will correct itself and you know life changes will you know really result in real estate decisions and we will see more of these transactions happening in the 2024 market so these high sales and high inventory levels that i'm predicting for this year for 2024 in the philly suburbs area it's going to be helping the homeowners the home primary homeowners who want to move in and live in the homes themselves but remember, there is an investor uh, market as well that has been on the sidelines in the last year. There were just not enough homes for them to buy. And, you know, the primary homes, homeowners were more motivated to, you know, get those few homes. So the investor clients are waiting for their opportunity to buy these residential properties. So a pro tip here, folks, anytime you read these clickbait articles on what's happening with the real estate industry, first understand what's happening, whether it's they're talking about residential market or the commercial market, because those two are, are completely opposite right now, in my opinion. The commercial market has some concerns, significant concerns regarding all the loans that were taken out and possibility of repayment, the whole work from home and how that market collapsed. So commercial market is facing some issues but what most of what i'm predicting and most of what i talk about is a residential real estate market in the philly suburbs and i'm pretty bullish about our area so coming back to inventory levels and the sales the investor clients who have been asking me bela what when are we going to see more inventory i'm looking to buy an investment property and so they are going to jump back into the market as well and that's what will increase the volume of our transactions and competitive bidding again um, are there any deals in real estate what's going to happen with pricing there are a couple of ways in which to look at it one is let's look at the foreclosures we talked about investor clients they're always asking me Bela, what about short sales what about foreclosures what's going to happen with that market well, my assessment to you is you have to have been borrowing pretty indiscriminately against your home to get into a foreclosure at this point. A short sale or a foreclosure is when the value of the home isn't enough when sold on the open market, not enough to cover the mortgage that is owed on the property. So given that the equity levels are so high, we just talked about high equity levels, homeowners have so much equity in their homes they're not gonna leave their keys behind and walk away from their homes everybody has these concerns about the 2008 and 9 issues that is not gonna be an issue look at the foreclosure chart over here 
the foreclosures were really, really high back in those years, in the recession years, and then they'd stopped completely. We had a moratorium on foreclosures during the COVID years, and now they are creeping up slightly. So you may see an, a, a clickbait headline that says, foreclosures are X percent over last years. And so when I get those calls from my clients, I get calls like, what's happening with the foreclosures? Are you going to share some? I need, I'm looking for an investment property. Well, that it's going to be a very, very small number of homes. And like I said, you have to have borrowed indiscriminately in order to be in the red, you know, right now in home ownership. At what the demand and supply will be doing. Here are the baby boomers who are going to be hopefully selling their homes and moving into, you know, more manageable, uh, low maintenance homes. And this is a whole generation of millennials looking to buy those homes that are being newly built or being sold by the baby boomers. The millennial generation has waited quite a bit. The average age of the, the home for first time homeowner now is about 34 and 35. It used to be, you know, lower in the 30s, 31 and 32. People started working at 26 and 27 and they bought their first home at 30, 31. But that number has increased slightly. And, but now the millennials are looking to buy. So the demand is significant because that's a huge population and there were just not enough homes to buy. So demand high, supply low means rising prices. This is the 2024 forecast for home prices. There's a whole bunch of um, um, people who have been polled for this one. one the average is 2.1% increase in prices. If you see all those green lines, there's a Mortgage Brokers Association prediction, there's a Zillow is saying it's gonna go up to 3.5% a higher. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac predictions, home price expectations survey where a whole bunch of people are interviewed. They're saying 2.4%. Goldman Sachs is saying 1.9%. NAR, the National Association of Realtors is saying a, a, a very tiny increase in purchase prices. Realtor.com is saying that we're gonna actually see a reversal, but the average of all of these is about a 2% increase in prices. My prediction for our local market is that we're going to see prices increase slightly higher than that. In the trenches, all day, every day, as I'm negotiating the deals for my clients, my prediction is that the home prices are not done rising in our area yet. So even though uh, it has been a shock to our system to see how high they've been this year in 2024, my expectation is that they're going to rise even further. So let's look at the Chester County market now. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier in the video, um, this is what all real estate is local. This is what the market is doing. I just picked Chester County as an example uh, of the Philly suburban market. Um, again, I'm very bullish about this market and this is where I've lived for the past 28 years. And so I feel like that experience also helps me in making my predictions. So Chester County has seen a significant increase in, you know, um, pricing. Our median home prices used to be 340, 345, 350 back when I joined the industry 14 years ago. Even as, you know, just a few years before COVID, 2018, 2019, we're looking at home prices that are in the 340, 350 range. Uh, but our average home of a Chester County in 2023 was $495,000. That's a pretty significant increase. And uh, this is all of Chester County in all of 2023, all kinds of homes that were sold through our MLS. That's just all the transactions and that's averaging it out. That's a pretty significant. Sometimes we even see monthly averages fluctuate in the mid fives and even sixes, but I believe that that's not enough of a sample size. But I, I went back an entire year and all the homes that sold in Chester County. That's 495,000 uh, for an average home that's sold here. That's pretty significant. And if you look at market trends, um, the, how many sales, home sales, uh, we, we were hovering in the 7,200, 300 range pre-COVID, you know, in the 2018, 2019 years. And in 2023, we had 5,300 homes sold in Chester County. So if you were listening to my, you know, earlier in the video where I talked about the total home sales in the country and how we had a 22% drop in the country from 2022 numbers, this is also a significant drop in Chester County from the 2022 numbers, but we are at a 19% drop and not 22 as per the national market. 
So you see in every statistic, you know, Chester County, the prices are going to be a little higher. The, the sales are going to be a little higher. The inventory levels are going to be a lot lower. Speaking of inventory levels here, this is the numbers that I pulled. We had 3.3 in terms of inventory levels in the national market. Um, what we're so seeing in Pennsylvania, this is statistics from the Bright MLS that uh, realtors use. We currently are at 2.94 uh, in Pennsylvania. That is some of the reports that Bright had published. And when I went in to calculate the Chester County numbers, we are at 1.2 months worth of inventory. So taking a little bit of time here to explain what months of inventory means. If 100 homes are being sold in a month, we have if we have 3.3 months worth of inventory, that means we have 330 homes at some point. And then, of course, in the next three months, the assumption is that the more homes will come on the market. So it is like a rolling average. But at least we have three months worth of inventory in the national markets. But the Chester County market has only 1.2 months worth of inventory. An average, you know, when the buyers and sellers market is considered more fair and equal, it is it's supposed to have six months worth of inventory. So we are significantly below six months and it is a very, very strong seller's market that I'm predicting once again for 2024. I know what this, what does this mean for buyers and sellers? Let's talk about that a little bit. So if you're a home buyer in Chester County area, in the Philly suburbs area, and you're saying, I need to buy a house bail and what should I do? You know, I have given separate tips, you know, check out my videos where I talk about buyer tips and seller tips, um, you know, ones in the description below. But the first step would be to understand your numbers, get a good realtor on your side and, you know, uh, stay motivated is what I would say. That is the best way to home ownership in 2024. You don't need a realtor who's going to be who sells, you know, that aunt who sells only three homes a year. That's not going to cut it this year. Um, that neighbor who, you know, s sold homes 20 years ago, but hasn't quite sold much in this past year. This market is completely different. The way the business is done is completely different. And you need a whole uh, someone who's in the trenches all day, every day to be on your side, to write those aggressive offers, to educate you on the aggressive offers that you're going to make when you find your dream home. And to sort of make this whole buying process a flow, a system which gives you that confidence and that, you know, energy and motivation to make this happen for your family. If you're a seller in this market, well, this has been such a strong seller's market. This is, it's a crazy good market to sell your home. But the first question you want to ask yourself is, where am I going, right? Like you have to figure out where you're buying before you sell the home that you're living in. Do not work with realtors who end up giving you all this crazy, um, uh, you know, uh, stars in your eyes uh, kind of um, dreams where they'll tell you what they can get fetch for your home. The important thing is to make the transaction less stressful by figuring out where you're going first and help make that transition. Understand how the mortgage works and the financing works. Understand the locality. Where are you moving out of town? Are you moving within the state or in the local area? So that level of analysis is what you want from your seller's agent right now. And the other thing that you absolutely want is someone who will protect your best interests, not just when, at the time of negotiating the contract and finding your buyer, but evaluating the whole contract so that and tightening all the contingencies for you so that nothing falls apart between then and settlement. Because the last thing you need is to go back on the market and try to find another buyer, right? There's too many deals falling through because buyers get cold feet, because mortgages are denied. Yes, it still happens in this market. So you need someone qualified who has systems in place and who is doing this full time all day, every day, has the relationships in the industry. So that helps you get the best bang for your buck. I hope this was helpful, folks. These are my predictions. I would love to hear your feedback and let me know in the comments below what you think about, you know, the sales, the inventory levels and what our area is going to see. Uh, what are you as bullish about this just a county area as I am? And, um, you know, I know that some of my predictions may be wrong, may be right. I don't know. We'll evaluate them back in 2025 and I'll continue to make my annual predictions and we can have a good conversation next year.